This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. All right, this is uh, the third and the last lecture on control accounts. Uh, and I said I'd go through the other type of question you can be asked, which, as you can see, is something called a control account reconciliations. Uh, and uh, if you look at example two, I'll use this example to explain what it is and how we go about it. If you look at example two, it says, the uh, at the end of the month, the balance on the receivables ledger control account was 26,100. Now remember the receivables ledger control account or the sales ledger control account is the account for total receivables in the nominal ledger, uh, which is where the actual double entries have taken place. Also, it says the total of the list of balances in the receivables ledger, or the sales ledger, was 25,500. Now remember, the receivables ledger, the sales ledger, that's the book with the individual accounts for each customer, Mr. A owes 100, Mr. B owes 200, and so on, which isn't a part of the double entry. But if you think back to the first lecture, uh, on control accounts and back to the lecture on books of prime entry. Uh, I said twice in both lectures, uh, I said that the total on the total receivables account, the control account, should equal the total of the list of balances. And if they're not equal, there must be a mistake. And in the first of these three lectures, I gave you two little examples of mistakes we could have made. Uh, but if they don't agree, again, there has to be a mistake somewhere. And we better make sure we put it right. Uh, because if the total on the control account is wrong, we'll be putting the wrong balance in the statement of financial position for total receivables. If any of the individual balances are wrong, then, of course, the, the danger is we're chasing customers for the wrong amounts. So if they don't agree, we've got to find the mistake and we've got to put it right. And here it says, on investigation, the following errors have been discovered. So although in real life, we'd have to go through and find uh, where the mistakes were, here we've been told what the mistakes were. And our job is to correct the two figures. What is the correct balance on the receivables ledger control? What is the correct total on the list of balances? Uh, and of course, the two should end up being the same. And so let's do it. First of all, receivables ledger control, uh, that's part of our double entry in the nominal ledger. So let's open up a T account for total receivables or receivables ledger control account. And the balance at the moment, the question tells us, it'll be a debit balance, of course, it's receivables. The balance is 26,100. And when we look through the mistakes, if I find there have been any mistakes in this account, I'll debit or credit to put the balance right. Uh, also, though, in the receivables or sales ledger, Mr. A, Mr. B, Mr. C, um, we've done a list of the balances and got a total. Well, this isn't a T account, remember, so I'll do a little statement. Uh, the total of the list of balances at the moment is 25,500. And as we're going through, if I find there have been any mistakes in arriving at that total, well, I'll do it as a statement, we'll add or subtract to put the total right. So let's go through one by one and see what these mistakes are and how we're going to deal with them. A, a balance of 1,200 owing from Alex had been omitted, had been missed out 
from the list of balances. So first of all, what's wrong? Surely it's the list of balances that's wrong. We've listed them all, Mr. A, Mr. B, Mr. C, and so on, and added them up. But when we listed them, we've missed one out. Maybe we turned over two pages at once. Well, obviously, I think if you've missed one out, the list is wrong. We should add it into the list. And so we'll add the balance omitted or missed out at 1200. Now, I won't get a total yet until we've dealt with all the errors, but surely the total should be 1200 higher. B. The total of the receivables journal or the sales day book had been overcast by a thousand. Now, overcast means over added. So when we added up the total in that book, we had a total of a thousand more than it should have been. Now, what's that going to affect? Surely it won't affect the list of balances because. Remember, in the sales uh, day book or the receivables journal, you're listing each sale separately. And when we uh, come to the receivables or uh, sales ledger, we take each total, each figure rather, separately. Nowhere, when we were doing the... Um, individual accounts did I bother about the total. We come to add up, the correct total is 600. If we've over added, overcast, we've got a total of 1600. That doesn't affect uh, the ledger. We didn't use the total there. But where did I put that total? Surely the total is what I use in the nominal ledger, in the receivables ledger control account. Uh, the total um, sales, we will have debited receivables, credited sales. And here, well, we've debited receivables with a thousand too much. So we'll have debited receivables, credited sales with a thousand more than we should have done. Surely to correct it, if we've debited with a thousand too much, we'll credit it with a thousand. Uh, the double entry, you've debited receivables too much, you've credited sales too much. So you credit receivables to reduce it, you debit sales. Uh, but this is the correction of the overcast. I'm not worried about the double entries. My job we want to get these two totals correct. And in fact, whenever you see a totals wrong, it's always the control account that's affected because it's only in the control account that we're using the totals from the books of prime entry. Next one. A contra entry of 100 had not been entered anywhere. If it's not been entered anywhere, surely they're both wrong. Because if there's a contra entry, remember a contra entry is reducing receivables, reducing payables. Well, we should have entered it on the individual's account, reduced the amount they owed, and we haven't. So that person's balance is only too high. We need to reduce it. But not only should we have reduced the particular customer's balance, we should also have reduced the total receivables. Credit receivables. And we debit payables ledger control. Uh, finally, a credit balance of 800 in the receivables ledger has been listed as if it was a debit balance. Now the receivables ledger, that's this bit, 
That's Mr. A, Mr. B, Mr. C, the sales ledger. And of course, surely, in the receivables ledger, you'll expect the balances to all be debit balances. Customers owe us money. It says here there was a credit balance. How could there be a credit balance? Well, maybe a customer had overpaid. Maybe he'd returned goods, whatever. But although it's unusual, there can be a credit balance. One of the customers has paid too much and we owe him. So think about it. You may have lots of customers owing you money. Mr A might owe us a thousand. Mr B might owe us five hundred. Mr C is overpaid and so we owe him a credit balance of eight hundred. And so what should the total come to? The total of those a thousand, fifteen hundred, it should come to seven hundred. Uh, but what have we done? Whoever we asked to do the list has listed the balances and said A, a thousand, B, five hundred, and C, they listed it as, a, as, as if it were a debit balance. They didn't notice it was on the other page. They're so used to customers owing money that they just listed eight hundred as though they owed us. And so the total, they would have got 2,300. And of course it's wrong. And how much is it wrong by? Because they added 800 when they should have subtracted 800. It's wrong by 1,600. Twice. You know, we've got to take out the 800 which shouldn't have been added on. That would make it 800 lower. And then we've got to subtract the 800 we should have subtracted, which would make it another 800 lower. And so to correct it, we need to subtract it twice. Uh, wrong balance. In the exam, you're not having to write the words. Uh, let's just get to my numbers. And so we've put through all the adjustments. What's the correct balance on the receivables ledger control? I get a balance of 25,000. And what's the correct total on the list of balances? Uh, 25,500, add 1,200, subtract 17. 25,000. And of course the two do now agree. So, I hope that's clear. Um, just one thing though, as far as the exam is concerned, uh, to ask you to do both like that, um, it's easy to cheat the answer. What I mean is, just suppose For whatever reason, you knew there was a wrong balance and you knew you had to adjust by 1600, but you couldn't decide whether to add or subtract. And that shouldn't be a problem, it should be clear. But suppose you just couldn't decide. Well, you're not stupid, you know the two should be the same. And so you'll say, ah, which one makes it the same? Ah, subtract. So you end up subtracting 1600 and getting the same answer, but you didn't really know what you were doing, whereas somebody else did it and they knew what they were doing, you know, they deserve more marks. And so to give it you like that, it's a bit easy, too easy to sort of get something right even though you didn't understand. And so what happens in the exam is one of two things. Either they'll give you a list of errors, but perhaps only give you three of them, and ask you what difference still remains. So, you know, if they didn't give you that last error, if it wasn't there, you'd have 25,000 on the control. Uh, on the list of balances, if that 1600 wasn't there, you'd have 26,600. It'd say what balance remains. Well, it'd be the difference. Uh, the other way they set it, is instead of having you do both of them, 
they only ask you for one of them. They say, what's the correct balance on receivable subject control? And they don't give you any information about the total list of balances. They give you all the errors. And so you'd go down and you'd say, ah, balance emitted from list of balances doesn't affect sales ledger control. Total of the sales journal overcast, that does affect it. Contra entry, that affects it. Uh, the credit balance listed wrongly doesn't affect the control account. And so what's the fine? The correct balance, 25,000. But because they didn't give you the total list of balances, uh, you have nothing to check your answer to. Or alternatively, they might not have given you that figure, just given you the 25,500. List of errors, and I should have put that right. So, there we are. Uh, that's everything in these three lectures that you need for control accounts.